Today I am driving a car owned by a very brave man. His name is Dan. That's not why he's brave, by the way. Nothing wrong with Dan as a name. Good, dependable, strong name is Dan. No, no. He's brave because he has brought me to review, as honestly as I possibly can, his heavily modified Subaru Impreza. And the reason I feel that is brave is because, to me, heavily modified is typically a synonym for ruined. And I said as much to him. In my reply, I said, Dan, I'd love to try your car, but um, you are aware this isn't really my type of thing, and I will be brutally honest about it, as I am with everything. Yep, no problem, he said. OK, then, Dan, challenge accepted. <laughs> say that this is a heavily modified car, I really, really do mean it. This isn't just an eBay turbo and a silly wing on a standard car. Oh no, he has gone to town with this. So much so that in order to talk you through the specification, I'm going to have to hand you over to the considerably more knowledgeable voiceover JM. Take it away. Externally, the car has a Viz carbon bonnet, the front bumper from a final edition, removed fog lights, and a diode dynamics switchback C light setup. No, I don't know either. It also has a subtle lip kit and a Perrin wing. It sits lower courtesy of H&R coilovers, which are joined by later STI strut tops, bump stops and conical washers. The car runs wide line adjustable anti-roll bars front and rear. Brakes are by Alcon, 6-pot extreme advantage items with 365mm discs. Pads are for Odo DS2500 and you've got the obligatory upgraded lines and fluid. These sit behind a set of Matigi MR145 wheels measuring 18 inches diameter and 9.5 wide. Of course, you'll be wondering about the engine, and no surprise, that's got the biggest list of mods. This big, in fact. Highlights include a closed deck conversion, uprated iron sleeves, Marla pistons, manly conrods, a nitrided crank, ACL race bearings, Brian Crower Stage 2 camshafts, Supertech cam followers, retainers, valves, seats and seals. The build features a mixture of materials, with everything from high strength iron and steel to titanium and inconel. Lubrication is aided by a Killer B windage tray and oil baffle plate. There is a Stage 3 competition clutch mated to an OEM flywheel and the ECU is an Mtron unit. That engine is fed by a massively upgraded fuel system with 1300cc injectors and twin 340 litre per hour pumps. The turbo is in its standard location but is a precision 5530. The exhaust is by NVIDIA and features a 3 inch downpipe and R400 centre section. There are equal length manifolds and a lot more, but you get the idea. See what I mean? I was not joking, that is a fairly extensive list, but there were a few things about this particular car that really piqued my interest. First off, with the exception of the engine work, which was done by engine tuner down in Plymouth, Dan has done just about everything to this car himself, and you certainly cannot accuse him of cutting corners. The engine building process alone took around a year on account of the fact he was very specific about the parts that he wanted, and the cost of it was not far off the cost of buying the entire car. But more than that, though the engine has been built in most departments to cope with 7, 8, even 900 horsepower, it is currently running only 560. With 600 pound foot of torque, that's 810 newton meters. He knows that with a bigger turbo, he could easily have another 100 horses, but also that would come at the cost of some drivability, therefore addressing one of my key concerns, which I'll get onto in a little bit. And, though I am sure you will agree that the modifications to the engine, the suspension and the exterior have been somewhat comprehensive, the list for the interior modifications consisted of this personal steering wheel. That's it. There used to be a snap-on boss to extend it a little bit, but he found that meant that the indicator stalks and wash wipe were a little bit too far away. So this is it. From in here, this is basically a totally standard WRX STI of the time. And it's a very tidy one too. In fact, the whole thing appears to me very, very well kept. 
and I like that. This car is a living, warbling proof that you can have something heavily modified, high performance, but still maintained to a fairly decent visual standard. I think I've lost count of the number of times I've seen a heavily modified Japanese car, particularly the likes of the 350Z, Evos and Imprezas, where the car has clearly had an awful lot of money thrown at it, but it's still fairly scruffy. And that I just can't deal with. You've spent tens of thousands of pounds on carbon fibre tat. Throw a sponge at it. Use my discount code, 10% off Dodo Juice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this car is not like that, which is a very good thing, because I have to confess, as soon as I'd seen the list of modifications to this car, I thought it was going to be full house in modified car bingo. What do I mean by that? Well, let's be honest, shall we? Just about every car that has a mods list like that is generally the same. Though they may look slightly different, they have lots and lots and lots of power, but delivered in a really spiky, unpleasant fashion, meaning the car can be a little bit sketchy to drive. The suspension then, though sometimes made of very fine components, is often so low and stiff that it's unpleasant, borderline dangerous, and also just not something that's actually capable anymore of going around corners at the speeds it can now generate. They're almost always anti-socially loud with near straight through pipes, full decats and all sorts of stuff that makes them simply obnoxious. And I really, really dislike that because to me, that's exactly the sort of thing that makes people hate cars and hate car people and car shows and car culture in general. And it's under attack enough that I don't think we need to bring any more fuel for that particular fire. As you can probably tell, it is on that last front where this car does play to type, because it is rather loud. Annoyingly, it's probably louder in here than it is out there. I've already done my drive-by shots with this today, and though it's certainly vocal, you can hear it coming from some way, it's not anywhere near as loud as many others, and mercifully, it doesn't have forced pops and bangs. All the crackles you hear are the Mtron ECU just doing its thing, feeding the car with the fuel that it requires, and that is another small but crucial detail that I really appreciate. I asked Dan what exactly his intentions were for this car. He has previously had things like an 800 horsepower R32 GTR, so he's very familiar with the modified Japanese world. But with this, what he wanted to build was a car that will do a 10 second quarter mile down at Santa Pod, but is also a car you could take to the shops and back without requiring the legs of Arnold Schwarzenegger or the patience of Pope Benedict. And, exhaust aside, I think he's actually quite some way to achieving that. I think this actually is one of the best modified cars that I've driven, and that's before I put my foot down, because the fact is, I expect when you put your foot down, this thing is going to be rather sensational. Probably a little bit hilarious, maybe a touch wild, I'm sure entertaining, but it will do the business. It's a fast Subaru, I've met its kind before. However, where most of these cars fall down is for doing this kind of bit. Just think about it, this is a two and a half litre engine. It hasn't been bored or stroked, and it's still making 560 horsepower. The same amount that McLaren were getting out of a near four litre engine. But it's docile, it's tractable, it's easy to drive. The clutch is not unpleasant. Unless I knew that it was a modified one, I wouldn't really think anything of it. The gear shift is nice, it's friendly, the action is smooth, nearly no play in it. The car's got 57,000 miles on the clock and it clearly has been very, very well kept. Even the suspension, which, yes, is a little bit firm, particularly at lower speeds, isn't that bad. It's got an edge of compliance to it. And yesterday, I drove a modified Civic that had a fifth the power of this, and that had more issues with that road at this speed. I also have to say that overall, I am quite a fan of this generation Subaru Impreza. In fact, I like all the Imprezas. I have developed something of a soft spot for the hatchback, but this is the one that came after, and in Britain, is a really forgotten model. It was still quite popular in the USA and Australia, but here, it was a car that I think just about nobody was keen on. The people that had been into Impreza's 20 years ago moved on to the likes of A45 AMG's Audi RS3's, and though they are a brilliant, usable car with plenty of space for four adults, a big boot, and a fantastic drive, better, I think, than those that came before, if you were already into your Subarus and you'd invested a lot of money in an old one, I don't think you'd have many reasons to upgrade to this, certainly not on paper. Anyway, this car should be nice and warm now, so I suppose time to find out what it is like when we unleash the beast. A 
tell you something, Dan. You can colour me impressed. I think this really is one of the best heavily modified cars I have ever driven. The last time I experienced something vaguely similar, it was a 600 horsepower Mitsubishi Evo 10 that I drove in the United States. Now there are two things that I recall very vividly from that day. First was the fact that by the owner's admission, he had fitted a turbo that was far, far too large, meaning below 4,000 RPM, it had nothing, then above 4,000 RPM, it gave you everything, regardless of whether you wanted it or not. And though it certainly held on, it was nothing short of terrifying. The other thing was that while I was driving, I thought somebody had let their dog off a lead as I saw one running down the road, and it turned out not to be a dog, but a bear. Hmm. I don't think we're going to find any of those today. But speaking of animals, this is of a very different variety to that I expected. Power comes in from about 3,500 RPM, nearly full torque is made at 4 grand. But, um, for the most part, six feels like more than enough. Crikey, oh blimey. I know you're gonna wanna hear what it sounds like at full chat, so what I'll do is I'll drop a few gears, get it in a straight line, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of full RPM, but <laughs> this thing is mighty. More impressively though, yes, it does have some turbo lag, but the turbo also comes in in a really progressive and nice, smooth way. At no point does this feel out of control. It's a very, very easy to handle car, this. Though admittedly, I am not currently running it in full power. I'm in medium setting, which may be only about 60 horses or so down, but as I do not wish to be accused of being a bit of a Jesse, I've now put it in full fat mode. I'll get it in a straight and we'll see what she's got. It's sensational, this thing. Now, I was told that it had revved to about eight, but the red line there came in at about seven and a half. So maybe the turbos are good till um, eight. Oh, and in case you are wondering why it doesn't really sound like your typical Subaru, that's because of the manifolds. You stick equal length manifolds on an Impreza and it loses that distinctive warble. There's still an element of it, but nowhere near as much as you're probably used to. Three point turn hill start torture test, which again, in a car like this, shouldn't be very nice. Actually, totally fine. This is a really well behaved car. Okay, so the engine is great, but then for the money spent it should be. What about the rest of it? Well, you know what? That's where it's even better. The steering in this is easily the best in any Subaru I have ever driven full stop. And I have driven quite a few, but the fact is in most of them, including stuff like the legendary 22B, it's a bit rubbish. It's just vague, woolly, indistinct, all of the cliches, it's not nice. And when you combine that with the fact that often a Subaru is a very front-led chassis, that's just not a match made in heaven. It means that often you'll pile into a corner with really no idea of how much you're asking of the car, only to find out too late that the answer was too much. This though, it's gorgeous, full of feedback, a beautiful waiting. Yes, it's an intense drive, it's physical, but you do want that from a car like this. The suspension likewise, pile on the speed, it limbers up a little bit, and though it never becomes truly soft and really compliant as in many a sports car, I think for this kind of thing, a tuner special, it's actually fine, it's much better than I expected it to be. Dan could have easily gone a whole lot further with it, put different top mounts in, done all sorts of stuff, made it a real crazy time attack type beast, but he's resisted that temptation and I think that was very, very wise. It's just the amount of noise this thing is currently making which is detracting from the whole experience. Oh, ho, ho, ho. One thing to note, you do have to brace yourself for a little bit of torque steer if you're fully on it and the road is not perfectly level, which it never is in Britain. Not as bad as some other cars have experienced. In fact, a modified Civic Type R, the turbo one, would be worse, but it's something worth mentioning. Brakes, they're mighty. Pedal feel, absolutely excellent. And for the kind of speeds that I'm doing, road legal ones, they are more than adequate. I expect if you were to take this on the Autobahn or down Santa Pod, you'd be very, very grateful for them. And you know, honestly, this whole thing really does work. It just all comes together. Every element of it, I think, has been taken just about as far as you can go before it gets silly, dialed back a notch, and then set. And if that's the kind of thing that you're after, this is brilliant. From the way that it looks, I think actually it's a fabulous thing. 
it looks probably a, a little less modified than you might think. The standard WRX STI of this generation already has a, a big wing and comes with the blue paintwork and often the gold wheels as well. So actually, the big giveaways for this are the enormous scoop on the carbon bonnet and the little front mount intercooler you can see just peering through. That's actually four inches thick and a foot tall. It's massive, but doesn't appear that way. And I really, really appreciate the attention to detail that's gone into making this look and feel like a, well, OEM seems a strong word, but vaguely OEM thing. I think really just about the only thing I'm not in love with is the massive sunstrip up here. Combine that with the fact you've got this dark coloured headliner and a B pillar that's quite far forward, and it does feel quite claustrophobic. You actually get sort of shades of BTCC car in here because you feel like you're quite far back from the rest of it. You feel like you're very much in the centre of the car. I suppose in some ways that's quite cool and I don't hate it, but it does feel a little bit odd, I have to say. Standard fitment for these cars includes a computer-controlled centre differential, which you can also override with various settings, but I've just left it to its automatic mode. That was uh, Dan's recommendation. <laughs> yeah, there is quite a bit of turbo lag. <laughs> Let me demonstrate. <laughs> OK, so we're at, we're at 4,000 RPM now. OK, so foot flat. There's the power. <laughs> But I suppose there's enough of it that it makes it worth waiting for. I'd normally be tempted to say that with this sort of build, I'd also want some bucket seats in here, but as is common for many a Subaru, these are actually really quite nice. They hug you a bit more than they look like they do, and I like them. They, oh, really, really. Congratulations, you and the Cooper born. I hope you're very happy with yourself. I did not flash them. I did not let them out. They just pulled out in front of me. done a good job of this. Well done, Dan. So then, that's enough from me. I'm going to give my microphone a chance to recover. And as ever, I want to say a huge thank you to Dan for bringing his car out and to you for watching. Don't forget, hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.